Hey folks, welcome along to another Best in the Flyer video. Hope you're well. Out and about again on a beautiful day on the awesome Honda CBR1000RR-R Fireblade SP. An incredible bit of kit that I've been riding for the last couple of weeks and I've been getting to know the bike as well as I possibly can. And in this video, I'm going to give you all the lessons I've learned about the bike. So if you're interested in this machine, stick around and stay tuned. Okay, so welcome back to the garage, and here she is, the CBR1000RR-R Fireblade SP. All a bit of a mouthful, but what a bike, an absolute beast. Now, as I say, somewhat wasted on me, uh, because, of course, I'm not a track rider. I've just been riding this on the road for the last couple of weeks, but I've got to know the bike as well as I can. I've ridden it in all sorts of conditions and on all sorts of roads. I've ridden it at night, I've ridden it in the rain, I've, I've ridden it on country lanes, on faster roads. I'm going to bring you all that stuff in this video, and then I'm going to bring you the pros and cons of the bike. What's all the things that I've learned about the bike? There are some great things about this bike, but not everything is great. There's some negative points as well, so I'm going to take you through all those. So if you're interested in the uh, Fireblade, stick around, stay tuned. This video, very much for you. Okay, so what's the uh, Fireblade SP like on a motorway? Well, as you'd imagine, there's absolutely bags of power. So cruising along at 70 miles an hour, the bike is barely tickling along. Look, I'm doing, well, I'm trying to hold an indicated steady 72. I'm in sixth gear and it's doing uh, 4,500 RPM. So certainly not under any stress at higher speeds on the motorway. Crouch down like this as I am. I'm in uh, pretty calm air, actually. The screen's doing a good, good job chucking the air over me and the lower part of the fairing is keeping all the draft off me legs as well so nice and protected if I'm tucked down obviously if I sit up different kettle of fish I've now got a lot of uh, wind blast in my chest as you'd expect so uh, you're better off tucked down I guess it depends it's very easy for your speed to creep up I guess it depends how far you've got to go on the motorway as to how you'd regard it because if you did hours and hours like this we get pretty uncomfortable being tucked down on the tank, I guess. But for short blacks on the motorway, fairing does a good job. And of course, oodles of speed for overtakes and everything else you need. So no real worries on the motorway. So what's it like riding the mighty Fireblade at night? <laughs> well, who in their right mind is going to ride their uh, litre sports bike at night? I don't know, but uh, you may have to. You might get caught out and have to ride at night. So I haven't seen the other reviews that have looked at the lights of the Fireblade, so I might as well be the first. <laughs> now, as usual, the GoPro won't show the lights in their full glory, unfortunately. Uh, so you'll have to take my word for it a bit. The lights on the bike are, of course, all LED, and they're very, very good. This is on dip at the moment. I've got a nice wide spread, uh, and I can see a fair way in the distance as well. Controlling the lights is just by my sort of left hand trigger finger to put them onto full beam I push the uh, trigger forward and there we go that turns night into day absolutely beautiful And then to turn them off I just click it again and if I want to flash the lights I could just pull it back so I have got that facility The TFT is nice to read at night I don't think it's changed actually I think it's got a black background anyway can't remember from when I was riding it earlier, but it's not too dazzling. It's nice and clear to read at night, so no problem reading the instrumentation. What the bike doesn't have is lit switch gear. It's not unusual in that. Loads of bikes don't have lit switch gear these days. And because it is relatively complicated with the switching, with the uh, switches on the bike, that would be handy. But again, this is a sports bike that you happen to be able to ride on the road. Things like convenience for riding at night weren't high in the uh, in the agenda when the designers came up with this bike but yeah if you get caught out and you have to ride at night then the lights are absolutely brilliant on this no real problem at all riding the fire blade at night man that sun is bright which puts me in the mood of holidays <laughs> okay so what about taking the fire blade on holiday then going touring on the bike what are the chances of that? Well, it has to be said, once again, it's not the ideal choice for touring. Although, of course, you can do it. You can tour on any bike. And uh, I know some people that have been around the world on sports bike. Well, one, that'll be, uh, that'll be Brucey. Hello, sir. On the Jixxer. Like that was that we just passed. Anyway, so you could tour on it, but uh, there are no luggage options as such. So you're going to have to stick stuff 
either in a tank bag or take a rucksack with you. There's no luggage options you can get on the back. And it has to be said, if you can do long miles on the motorway to get to wherever you're going, it's not going to be the comfiest transit ever. That said, once you get to where you're going, if you're going to the Alps or somewhere, you're going to have an absolute power of a time on this machine, ripping around those roads, or in Spain or somewhere, it'd be absolutely amazing. Hello, lots of bikes out today, another Jixxer. Very popular. So yeah, so for touring, the Fireblade wouldn't be my first choice, no surprise there. But it is possible if you're a die-hard nutter. No offence, Bruce. So what's a bike like riding in the wet? Well, this uh, isn't really a particularly wet day. There's a bit of drizzle in the air and it's damp under tyre. Unfortunately, during the time that I've had the bike, we haven't had a, a massive deluge for me to test her in, but uh, it is a bit of a slippery old day. I've got the bike in rain mode, so the electronics are all here to help you out. No problem there. Uh, in terms of the tyres that it comes with, this particular bike, it's got the Pirelli Super Coursers on, which are super sticky tyres when you're on track but they aren't, uh, aren't well known for their wet weather performance, that has to be said. So if you were going to be buying one of these for use as a day-to-day -day commuter, which would be bizarre, but if you were, you might want to put some other tyres on that are a bit more suited to wet weather riding. But if uh, you just caught out a bit like I have been today, where it's just a little bit damp under tyre, then these supercourses are fine. Once they're, up, once they're warm, as they are at the moment, because I've been riding for the last hour, then they feel really grippy. And once again, you've got the fairing here to keep the worst of the weather off you as well. Although you'd have to tuck down because otherwise it's going to be chucking water right in your eye line. <laughs> but like any bike, perfectly possible to ride it in the wet. It's got all the electronics to help you. Just take it a little bit easy because uh, physics at some point can take over. Okay, so that's all well and good, but what about practical items? If you're going to get one of these bikes and you're going to ride it day to day, what are some of the uh, practical items you're going to need to attend to? First off, what about some of the, one of the things that people ask me is what about pumping up the tyres, how hard is that? Not hard at all, because on here I'm glad to say it is fitted with the right angle valves. Well, as, because these discs are so big though, uh, it is quite tight getting in there, so uh, I don't think you're going to have an issue pumping the tyres up. I'm glad to see it's got the right angle valves though. All right, the next thing that uh, comes up in these uh, practical sections is what about lubing the chain? Uh, how hard is that on this bike? Well, uh, it's as hard or as easy as any other sports bike. You're going to have to get yourself a paddock stand, get some bobbins on here, uh, which uh, the swing arm is drilled for, of course, uh, and then you're going to be able to get the chain. Of course, the chain is on this side, um, but yeah, you can then uh, lube it in the usual way. Okay, next on the uh, practical items list that people often ask about is what's a horn like, to be honest. I've not even tried it, let's give it a go. Let's just bring it to life by pressing the button on the side. There we go, and uh, as ever, you're not going to get a full impression of what the horn's like because you're just hearing out of my mic here, but let's give her a dab and see what she sounds like. Ooh, pretty loud, pretty shrill. Uh, annoyingly, uh, as Hondas often do, the horn and the indicator are sort of transposed again. They do that thing on Hondas. I don't know why they do that, but uh, yeah, the horn seems absolutely fine. Well, uh, let's uh, kill that. All right, and then the other thing that people often ask is what's under the seat? So let's have a go at getting the seat off. Let me just move you. There we go. So uh, for this, it's really just this back bit you get. This is the key that you get with it, by the way. It's one of these keyless affairs, but there is a sort of a key bit in the fob somehow. How do you get it out? There you go. There we go. There. And I think it's going to be in there. Come around here. Right, let me show you under here. So uh, actually, look at that. There's a manual under there all along, if only I'd checked. And uh, there's ample room under there for uh, Lamb Chops' uh, Macadies. Look at that. And there's even a little... There's a tool roll. Goodness me. What's in it? You can put you down. I'll find out. Very exciting. They're stuck in the end, but it feels like an Allen key or two. That's it. <laughs> I was exactly right. That's the toolkit. Two Allen keys. Brilliant. Well, I suppose it's better than nothing. Something else I occasionally get asked is what about checking the oil? Is it a dipstick? Is it a sight glass? Well, on the uh, Fireblade, it's a dipstick. It's down here. Look, just there. 
got this quite a long dipstick affair. I won't bother taking it out, but you get the idea. You know what a dipstick is like. And then you top it all up just there. Okay, and last thing on the practical stuff is uh, people often ask, what's it like in terms of the seating position actually on the bike? I've shown you what it's like when I'm riding, and I talked about that in my first impressions review. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch that. That's where I talk about the spec and what it's like, you know, the comfort and all that sort of thing. But in terms of what it's actually like seeing me on the bike, here's a, a shot of me actually sat on it, so you can see uh, how stretched out or otherwise my legs are and where my feet are on the ground as well. Of course, it is a sporty position. There is quite a lot of... Um, uh, space on the bike though you can move forward and back on the seat i found this one of the more comfortable sports bikes that i've ever ridden so uh, there we go there's a few practical points okay so what's the fire blade like if you have to ride it in traffic in the urban environment in towns that sort of thing well i'm just coming to chesham here hardly the uh, biggest metropolis in the world <laughs> but as busy as it gets here in the uh, buckinghamshire chilton's so I'll have to sort of use my imagination a little bit as to what this would be like if you're going to ride it in a busy town or city, if you're going to commute or something. Now, of course, it's not the ideal bike for that. It's that, you know, let's not kid ourselves. It's not built for that. But can you ride it in town if you have to? Well, the answer very much is yes. Even at these slow speeds, here I am in a bit of a queue of traffic. I'm doing 22, 21 miles an hour. Second gear, and the bike isn't complaining at all. It's as smooth as you like, this bike. Very, very easy to ride, even at low speed even though of course it's designed very much for high speed easy to filter with as well because it's nice and light what I would say is because you're laying over the bike in a sort of a sporty position you don't have the best view through traffic so if your commute or your riding in town involves you know those busy roads where you're often stuck in traffic then uh, yeah sure you can filter through but your view over the traffic isn't very good I'm just behind this Ford S Max look and I can't see over him but then again as I say, the bike is hardly designed as a commuter, so I'm going to give it low marks for riding in the uh, urban environment. But, uh, you know, what do you expect? It's a full-on thoroughbred sports bike. Let's not waste it riding around market towns in Buckinghamshire. Get real. Pleasant though it is. So how about fuel on the uh, Fireblade SP then? Well, I don't think you buy a sports bike like this looking for fuel economy but uh, according to the bike I'm getting 44.7 miles per gallon out of it at the moment and I've just been uh, that's averaged over the period that I've had it and I've just been riding it fairly sedately so I think that would uh, glug up quite a bit more if you're going to use this for the uh, purpose for which it was built i.e. track work but uh, as I say I don't suppose uh, if you're going to afford one of these fuel economy is going to be too high on your wish list the bike does need some more fuel though, so I'm going to pop and get some hopper juice now and just see if there's any surprises when you actually do the fueling up. Not expecting any, but you never know, all bikes are slightly different, aren't they? Fuel light on this is just this little LED indicator there, look. So, you know, it's not exactly uh, in your face. I only really just noticed it, and it's been on for some while. I've got another 22 miles to go, according to that, the range on it. But I never trust those calculators very much. Anyway, I'm going to pop into my local Morrisons and get some fuel, which I'll no doubt be criticised for. <laughs> I know some people don't like supermarket fuel, but it does me fine. Alrighty, so that'll do for me. In she goes. So yeah, so much for keyless. Need to use the key anyway. How's that go in there? Alright, so yeah, I'm not a big fan of keyless ignition at best of time, but if you're going to do it, you might as well have everything keyless, but for this, you need to use the, uh, the actual key on the fob. So that's a bit rubbish. God, I hate all this glovage. Right, there we go. Okay, let's bring it back to life then. So, no huge surprises filling her up. And uh, one other thing, just while we're on the subject of fuel and fueling up, is I've not been able to find a fuel gauge on the bike either, which is a bit of a pain. So you've got that uh, not very conspicuous indicator that comes on when you get lower fuel. But other than that, there's no fuel gauge, so uh, that's not a good thing. Okay, so into my favourite uh, local station, Great Missenden, so I can do the uh, lugging about test. This is the bit where... Uh, I simulate what it's like to move the bike around 
on your driveway to see how easy it is and also it's a chance for us to check what the turning circle was like so let me come over here somewhere out the way of the really bright sun so we can see what it's like to lug around so I'm going to stick it in the middle of this parking spot right there for neutral there we go stands quite easy to find and uh, killer all right there we go and there she is so uh, yeah what a beaut so in terms of lugging it about the first thing that comes to mind no grab handles as such but it doesn't matter it's a light bike anyway and, and relatively low to get hold of and of course the um, handlebars are low set as well so no difficult getting off the side stand right I'm in the middle of this parking spot let's go round and then as soon as I get to the end full lock let's see what we've got feels quite wide it has to be said feels very wide in fact <laughs> yeah like most sports bikes it's got a pretty wide turning circle there we go let's pop her in there so that was from that one there so it's a whole two and a bit three spaces to do 180 degrees but uh, you know most sports bikes are like that aren't they normally they're constricted by the fuel tank and the fairing because of the uh, clip on low handlebars there so no different there no surprises but in terms of moving it around on the driveway very very easy nice and light to move no problem whatsoever Okay, so at the start of the video, I said that uh, I was not only going to show you what this bike is like in the various different riding conditions, uh, but also take you through the pros and the cons of the bike. So uh, as ever, I've written them all down. Uh, I've got a list of negatives and positives. We'll start with the negatives, because I always like to end on a high note. And uh, yeah, I'll tell you what I found out about the bike that I didn't like very much. Now I have to say, I'm clashing at straws a bit. There's not an awful lot about the bike to not like. It really is an impressive machine. First thing I've written down here, top yoke finish. Let me show you what I mean by this. The top yoke on this, I can't help but be a little bit disappointed by. Given this is the premium bike, the SP model, 24 grand, uh, this is the top yoke that you get on it. Now, it's just a, a bit of sort of flat, well, it is machined, but it's, uh, I don't know, it just doesn't look that impressive. When you compare it, for example, with my much cheaper, over here is my uh, Panigale. Let me show you the top yoke on here. Here we go. Check that out. A beautiful bit of uh, billet machined aluminium. Uh, looks really, really nice. And I just think, you know, that on the Ducati just looks so much more premium and better quality uh, than on this. That's a bike that, albeit in 2015, I paid about 15 grand for. This is a bike that's 24 grand. So, uh, yeah, so that was a bit disappointing. Small point, but just something that uh, I noticed. All right, next on my negative list, again, down at the handlebar end, I am again clutching at straws somewhat. What we're talking about? Well, it's the brake reservoir, reservoir on here. It's one of these plastic urine test affairs, which uh, many bikes are fitted with. But again, for a bike that's this premium, I just think that's a bit naff. Um, I would like to have seen some sort of, uh, you know, a nicer looking brake reservoir there anyway. So, yeah, small point, but just something I thought I'd mention. So next on my list is the uh, is the price of the bike. It is an expensive beast. This being the top of the line SP version is uh, twenty three thousand four hundred ninety one uh, according to the website at the moment. So an expensive bike for sure. That said, you can get the non SP one for considerably cheaper. And if you look at uh, its competitors, so if you look at say for example the Panigale V four S, which I guess is a competitor to this, that's twenty four two nine five. So getting on for a grand more expensive for the Panigale, albeit you know that's a different looking bike. So uh, anyway, it is an expensive machine. So uh, that definitely is a downside. But again, when I say it's expensive compared to the competition, it's not that expensive. So as you're gathering, I'm kind of clashing at straws here to find negatives to find uh, to say about the bike. I hate doing reviews where all I say is good things about machines. There's really not a lot I can find to not like about this bike. I guess uh, the only other thing for me personally, it is wasted on me. Again, this isn't really a negative point. This is very much a race bike that you can ride on the road. I've enjoyed riding on the road, but you're really only scratching the surface if you do that. You really want to take this on track. So, uh, yeah, so that's it for the negatives. Let's get on to the positive stuff. Okay, so once again, I've got a list here of the positives. And the first thing I've said on here is that it's very, very easy to ride. It flatters you, even though it's got 214 brake horsepower, this thing is not difficult to ride. And that is, uh, that is a great thing. I was a little bit intimidated when I learned that I was getting the bike and I thought it might just be too much for me, but it absolutely is not the case. Very easy to ride this, which, uh, which I like. So that was the first thing on the list. Next up here, uh, I've said here, it looks great. Let me just take the, lift the camera up, I'll show you. Um, obviously, it's a completely a subjective thing, but I just, love the way this bike looks it looks a proper workmanlike sports bike 
Uh, really, really nice. I love some of the, the touches on here. Things like, you know, the wings that are built in board. Uh, stuff like that, I think, just look really good on this. But, uh, yeah, that is very much a subjective point as to whether you like it or not, but I do. Uh, next up, I've said here, handling. You just think and go. This is, you know, lots of sports bikes are like this, but this is very much that. You look on the road where you want to go, and off it goes. It's very, very agile indeed. You don't have to... You don't, the geometry is just right, so you don't have to manhandle it much to get it around the corner. And at the same time, it doesn't sort of fall into corners or anything like that. So they've got it just right in, in terms of the handling. Love that. Uh, it sounds great at full chat. I mean, it sounds like a Formula One car when you wind it up. But unfortunately, you're going at ridiculous speed, so you're only going to really enjoy that on track. But my goodness me, the uh, four-cylinder engine on here, Dunarf sounds sweet when you wind it up. That's great. Um, next up, and this is something I wouldn't normally talk about um, in, in terms of a plus point, because again, it's kind of wasted on me. Let's just come around this side for a change. Uh, I've said here, on, tack, on track tech. Um, it's um, uh, The technology on here is just unbelievable. It's so adjustable. There's so much tech on the bike. Um, and again, you really only get the best out of it on track. But for example, things like the anti-wheelie control. Don't ask me how I know, but it works really, really well. Uh, I mean, absolutely astounding. So if you like technology on bikes, you're going to like this. Next up, and again, this is something you don't often hear talked about when you're talking about sports bikes, but I've written here, comfort. Uh, and again, I guess I'm mainly comparing it to my uh, trusty Panigale over there, which is the most uncomfortable thing ever. You're, you know, it's quite small and it gets very, very hot. This in comparison, quite, uh, I mean, it's still not a big bike compared to sports bikes of old, but it's quite roomy. I can stretch right out on here. Uh, I find it quite comfortable. The seat's quite big. Uh, you know, you can ride for, a, you know, a couple of hours in a stretch and you're not in any great pain on this, so comfort is a good thing on the bike. Next up, grin factor. Well, uh, it makes you feel special because of the bike that it is. Uh, and the whole time that I was riding this, I really enjoyed it. I mean, because it's easy to ride, because it is what it is, uh, you've just got a big beaming smile on your face the whole time. And that's probably the most important thing. So grin factor was the next thing. What else have I got here? Brutal power. Well, you know, acceleration never get, you never get tired of that, do you? Now, the thing is, most of its power is delivered up top. So again, you ain't going to tap into it if you're on the road. You've got to be on the track to properly enjoy that. But even, uh, you know, at lower RPMs, there's so much run in this bike. Uh, I mean, even when you're not uh, properly checking it, checking it out on the track, it still goes fast, and, and I love that about it. And then last but not least, what I said here, are things like the technical design features. So I love the ram air duct on the front of this. I love the fact that it's got a, a, an ex effectively a BSB swing arm on it. I love the fact it's got those uh, inboard wings that we talked about just now, all those sort of things. There's, there's just so much about this bike to like. Uh, they, the advantages or the pros way, uh, way outweigh, you know what I mean, the cons. Okay, so there we have it. That's my uh, in-depth review of the awesome CBR1000RR-R Fireblade SP. Bit of a tongue twister. Maybe they can come up with a snappier name next time, but uh, what a bike. I mean, as you've gathered, it's sort of wasted on me. I'm, I'm a road rider, not a track rider. And uh, this bike, of course, is primarily designed for the track. It really is a race bike that it so happens you can ride on the road as well. So I've only just scratched the surface of its capabilities. Not even that, really. But I've really enjoyed riding it. What I have proven, it's that even somebody like me, a numpty, <laughs> very average rider with no particular skills, can have a lot of fun on this bike and needn't feel intimidated, needn't feel excluded from this sort of machine. Well, that has to be said, for the money you're spending, if you're just going to ride it on the road pooling around like I do, then you're probably wasting it. But nonetheless, it's been an absolutely cracking experience. So huge thanks to Honda UK for lending me the bike for these last couple of weeks. Hope you've enjoyed the videos. Uh, if you haven't seen the other videos I've done on the bike, do check back on the channel. I'll put links in the corner if I can. Uh, there's my first impressions review where I go through what it's like to ride in terms of comfort, the spec, all that sort of thing. Uh, and then there are some other videos as well on the channel. Go and check those out if you're interested in the bike. All right, that's it for now. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so already. And that time, that way, I can see you on the next video. All right, until then, this has been the Mist and Flyer. Cheerio. Hey folks, it's Mr. Fly here, welcome along to another video. And uh, in this film, what I'll be talking about are all the... Oh, let's do it again. Hey folks, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. And uh, welcome to another video. And uh, in the... Uh, what do I normally do? Hey folks, it's Mr. Fly here, hope you're well. Now in this video, I'm going to be telling you all the things I've learned about the Honda... Oh, this is rubbish, let's do that again. Uh, S Panigale, for example, is more at uh, 24. Oh, uh, no, it's not. The V4 Panigale is this is. Oh, let's do it again, shall we?